Want to know the trends in the collector car world? Well, it's easy. All you have to do is keep an eye on the Barrett Jackson auction block. Hi there, I'm Rick Jabril. Thanks for joining us for our Top 10 series. Today, we're looking at the top 10 record setting sales that came out of the Barrett Jackson collector car auction in Las Vegas. Before we get to that Top 10, though, I need you to head down to that Barrett Jackson logo right down there. Make sure you click on it so that you can subscribe to our entire Top 10 series. Now, let's talk about those record setting sales. Some of them dead stock, some of them wildly custom, but once again, all of them setting a new record. We're going to start with number 10. It's a 2016, it's a Nissan GTR Nismo. This sold for $156,200, and that nearly doubles the previous record. So, let's go to Las Vegas. Here's our number 684, rolling up, specialist update, 2016 Nissan GTR Nismo. One of only 98 produced in black in 2016. This GTR Nismo is powered by a 3.8 liter twin turbo six cylinder engine. All wheel drive at both 600 horsepower. Zero to 60 time in 2.7 seconds. Top speed of 196 miles per hour. Clean Carfax history. 135. <laughs> 140,000. Clean car facts. Top speed of 196 miles per hour. One of only 98 produced 600 horsepower. Seven. 40, what do you want her now? 40, what about 40,000 dollar? 40, what about 40,000 dollar? Everybody through, everybody did 140,000 dollar to buy him at a day. Now, tail, 140 tail, what did he do? Tell it to be there. 140,000 dollar, not him and dead at the back of the tail, two dollar to be tail. 142, two, two, two dollar, what did he do? Two, five, what did he do? 45, 145,000 dollar, everybody through, everybody down. 145,000 dollar, not him and dead at the back of the bottom, but not even a bit nine. So, 142,000 and then. Time for number nine on our record setting list. And this one was more than four times the old record. It's for a 1995 Mercedes Benz G350D. This one, a custom six wheel drive model. This sold for $181,500. Lot number 762, 1995 Mercedes-Benz G350D custom 6x6 SUV. This custom G350D 6x6 G-Wagon with a maximum highway speed of 75 miles per hour came from Europe with 61,000 kilometers, 37,000 miles. The title reads miles exempt, powered by a 3.5 liter turbo diesel. All right, found out and how to get on Trey Trey 170. Fully adjustable front and rear leather seats with heat, cooling, memory, and massage as well as air conditioning, touch screens attached to the headrest, four-speed automatic, and it's equipped with front and rear disc brakes. 70, I did get down 170,000 on it. 170,000 on it, I did get down 170,000 on it. Everybody through, everybody done. 170,000 on it. 170, you want 165, you want 170? 170,000 on it, I did get down 170,000 on it here. 170,000 on it, everybody through, and I have... You want me to sell it, ma'am? Sold $165,000 in targets. Number eight is another custom, in this case a 1968 Dodge Coronet 440, modern Hemi V8 under the hood. Final sales price $192,500, nearly double the old record. Lot number 688, 1968 Dodge Coronet 440 Custom Coupe, 5.7 liter Hemi, back with a five-speed automatic transmission. First place at the Mopar Nationals, over $120,000 invested. Oh my, I'd have to get down, what do you mean? How about a dollar, don't have to get down to get it here? I'd have to get down, don't have to get down, somebody give a hundred thousand on it. And ten, twenty, and twenty thousand on it, I'd have to get down, twenty thousand, I'd have to get down, thirty, thirty, forty, forty, forty thousand on it. And forty thousand, I'd have fifty thousand on it. And fifty thousand, I'd have to get down, seventy thousand on it, everybody through, now eighty, and on ninety, a hundred and ninety thousand on it, a hundred and ninety thousand on it, I'd have to get down, one to get down, ninety, 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 I'd have to get down, one ninety on them all through. Hey, Kurt, Kurt, one ninety. It's got Hemi power, it's an award winner, it's a the Mopar Nationals winner. 90, I'd had to get 190,000, not it. 190, hey, 190, got 180 with you, and it's at 175. Hey, 170, now five. Hey, 175, hey, 175, and 175, you're in, cut, rod at 170, now five. Hey, 175, five, five and a half. Put your hands together. Sold for $170,000, Rod. We're gonna stay in the custom world for number seven. Check this out, a 1960 Chevrolet Biscayne. This sold for $198,000. The old record, just over 101,000. 1960 Chevy Biscayne Custom Sedan rolling up behind it, known as Great White. 
What's cool, of course, the Biscayne was the entry level of the full-size Chevy line. This one here has an LT4, which is a 6.2-liter supercharged Gen 3 engine with 650 horsepower. Now, this one's been painted pretty much all orange, which is attractive, but it's not a factory presentation. They were pretty much painted, well, black or just bare aluminum. But that's a supercharged crate engine. It's about one of the coolest crate engines that money can buy, and they put it in this beautiful body. Uh, but one thing I wasn't familiar with, the Biscayne is the base model, so an Impala would be a more luxurious version of this body? That's right, yeah. Yeah, the Impala was kind of the top level, but the Biscayne was the one you went NASCAR racing or drag racing, and it was the least expensive. But the one thing I love about this car is the combination of slick and square, if you will. This has the beautiful bubble top, but the full door frames and the fixed B-pillar kind of give it an austere, well, vibration, but the rear of this car has the uh, body-colored concave horizontal lines, and that is how these things were. The fleet cars, the base cars, did not have the aluminum applique you'd find on upper cars, and it's, it's rare to see it, really, with this effect right here, but that's what they were like on the base models. Pretty cool. And a moment ago, we were talking about how the styles changed. Remember, we saw that 1958 roll across the block just a few minutes ago. Very rounded, very blingy looking, and here we are just two years later, realizing that when the 58 was in the showroom, the engineers were working on the 1960. And they were probably looking at 58 going, man, that is so yesterday. Closed in on $200,000, we're at 177 right now. Wow, well, it still does have the fins. Of course, a few years after this, the Impala goes finless. But, uh, boy, that's quite the number there. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, that was the longest pause, wasn't it? Thought he'd sold it. One last bid came in. It was at 177. It went up to 178. Now they're trying to figure out whether they want to keep going up. And indeed, they do. It rides on an Art Morrison chassis, so it's got a lot of modern stuff underneath. Big Willwood brakes. Nice custom all the way around. 180,000 under 180 cal. That's the final price, $180,000 for a 1960 Chevy Biscayne Custom Sedan. Time to go in the stock restoration world for number six. This record setter is a 1967 Camaro Z28 from the Brian Frank collection. It sold for $220,000. The old record, 198. Featured collection of the auction here, now, folks. Now, the V28 was only the a mid-year regular in. production option that was added for best Camaro best so that they could homologate this car for the SCCA Trans Am Series with its 302 V8. Now, we know that when you order the Rally Sport appearance package with hideaway headlights with a Super Sport, you got SS badges. So why are there no Z28 badges on this car? Because they had no such protocol mid-year. So according to Jerry, this car is correct with an RS badge on the front fender, a Camaro script on the side, and that's it. Now, for 68, you'd get Z28 badging. Your point, Mike, the price of the Z28 package was $358.10, and again, only 602 people signed up because Chevrolet didn't really advertise it. They got into the swing of things in 68, where production multiplied by many. Now, four-speed transmission is the only transmission you'll find in a Z28 in 67 through 69. The automatic would arrive in 70. We're at $165,000 on this Camaro. And many of those original Z28s had their interiors stripped, roll cages installed, and went straight to the racetrack. Closing in on $200,000. No! No, to what the point you were making a moment ago, Z28 was really nothing special. It was a regular production order number. As time went along, some people said, oh, I want a Z28, and the name became attached to it, and now we're at $200,000. And that's just the first of three. For number five, we're not just going to break the record, we're going to shatter it. In this case, it's this wild 1959 Cadillac Ghostbusters Ecto-1 recreation. Now, the old record for a 1959 Cadillac was $21,500. When this one sold, $220,000. Completely shattered the old record. 
Well, there's something strange in the neighborhood here. Lot 639, a 1959 Cadillac hearse that's been modified into a screen accurate Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters. This is a highly screen accurate replica of the Ghostbusters Ecto-1, and it comes with lots of extras inside. You can see you have all the proton packs and equipment to capture ghosts, even Slimers hanging out inside. And one thing I noticed on the dashboard, dashboard it's signed by several cast members, including Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson. Who are you gonna call? Well, as Tyler Hoover says, who are you gonna call? In this case, it's Ghostbuster time. A nice reproduction from the 1959 Cadillac with the Ectomobile. Is there a 59 Cadillac hearse that has not been turned into an Ectomobile? Uh, I'm not aware of one, but boy, look at on the roof, everything is operational. They have really gone the extra mile to make this not just a look-alike, but a work-alike. And uh, the gentleman in the passenger seat climbing out, he's got the uniform on. <laughs> Although Cadillac got out of the market a long time ago, this is based on Cadillac's commercial chassis with a 156-inch wheelbase, and as a specific VIN, the Z in the third spot identifies a commercial car. And unlike, unlike any other Cadillac, which has coil springs in the back, these commercial cars have leaf springs in the back, which would give you a pretty harsh ride. But when it comes down to a hearse or an ambulance or a Ghostbuster Ectomobile, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, leaf springs only on commercial chassis. And look at the price, we're at $125,000. Well, what are you going to tell your kids if you don't buy this? You promised it, you better deliver. Now we're at $145,000 and still going. By the way, inside they've got proton packs, and each one of those proton packs is not inexpensive to build. The stretcher rack and other ghost catching equipment. I'm impressed. All the movie props this is just a, a, a tremendous piece of whimsy, well and they the have long gone the extra mile to make it as authentic as possible. And to get back to the core of this, the commercial chassis would then be sent by Cadillac to any one of a number of bodybuilders, in this case, a company called Superior, put the ambulance body on this in 59. We're closing in on $200,000. Well, this is every consigner's dream. Two committed bidders who each refuse to lose. We got them on the internet. We got them in the hall at $200,000. That's the final bid for this 1959 Cadillac Ghostbusters Ectomobile recreation. What a ride. And the biggest oh my gosh looks were from the sellers. Wow. Number four stays in the Cadillac world, but not quite as wild a custom. It's a 1960 Cadillac Coupe de Ville twin turbo. It sold for $275,000. That's more than three times the old record. Now for something completely different. You'll hear us say that a lot at Barrett Jackson because Steve Davis's docket quickly changes from muscle cars to customs to restorations and back again and more. This is a customized 1960 Cadillac Coupe de Ville two-door hardtop. Yeah, Mike, to your point, you know, I gotta say Steve Davis does a nice job. It's sort of like a nice album with one song flowing to the next. And indeed, going from a Boss 429 to a Cadillac Coupe de Ville only at Barrett Jackson. But I gotta love this engine. This is an LS with twin turbochargers. And again, there's no kit you can buy to make this happen. This all has to be custom fabricated. And that plumbing is all stainless steel, which is then, of course, TIG welded together by hand. But nicely presented, very symmetrical, lots of power. The 1960, similar in some ways to the 1959. Of course, the 1959 had slightly higher fins on the back, and of course, it had that iconic bullet tail light. Now we've gone to this rectangular, rectangular version with the circle tail lights inside. Love these wheels. These emulate the look of the Cadillac wheel cover, which would have been a 14 or a 15 inch diameter stainless steel stamping back in 1960. But these are undoubtedly computer generated on a CNC mill. Beautiful. By the way, if you're wondering what this license plate means, RD250, it's Road to 50, 50th anniversary for Barrett Jackson. All of the cars here at Barrett Jackson have that on. 
Motor Car, Green Man 28, only 10 miles from the field, award winning, no expense, and turbo And the bubble roof treatment extended from the low line Chevy, quote unquote, all the way up to Cadillac. And here again, we see the thin A and B pillars. The dog leg, a pillar there. A dog leg refers to the fact that it kicks back in toward the car. You can back smack your knee on that easily, uh, but again, it's a beautiful styling touch. Massive curved windshield. Seems like just a few minutes ago we were hyperventilating when a car hit two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, now it's another two hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred horsepower coming out of that engine at the rear wheels, not just coming out of the engine, but at the rear wheels. To your point, Rick, generally speaking, you lose about 20 to 30 percent of your power as it makes its way from the flywheel to the tire. So that's probably 700 horsepower at the crankshaft, <laughs> only with turbos. The fins on the 1960, the tail fins, were every bit as high as they were in 1959. But with the tail lights moved down to the bumper, these fins look lower than on the 59. They continued again for 1961, and then they got emasculated. By the way, that black paint has six coats of clear coat on top of it. That's how deep that paint is. Oh, knockout bid. Somebody just jumped it from 235 to 250, and that did it. Sold for a quarter million dollars. Time for the top three record setters. At number three was an absolutely beautiful 1987 Buick GNX. What was so special about this, it had less than 10 miles on the odometer. When it was sold, the price, $275,000, more than $50,000 more than the old record. Something in triple black. How about a 1987 Buick GNX? GNX, of course, was the uh, capstone to the Buick Turbo Dynasty. These were built in 87, and that was it. GNX, of course, is basically a Grand National, which is already crazy powerful and takes it to the next level. They always have this sort of gap down here. That's where the intercooler gets its cold air down low. And under the hood, of course, is a tweaked 3.8 liter. One thing that's interesting about the GNX, of course, is they have the vent ports on the front fenders, but they don't have the 3.8 liter logos on the hood. But under the tail of this puppy, you will find a differential cover that's cast aluminum with an arm hanging off of it that accepts a torque rod that goes all the way to the transmission. Again, we mentioned this earlier, and that's all about curbing pinion rise and axle hop. So these are way more than a Grand National with big wheels and a little hotter engine. There's a lot of engineering underneath the skin. This one is number 480 of 547 built this year, but the big number on this car, we are told, is 8.7. That's how many miles are on the odometer. You know, we saw this car in Florida about six or seven years ago when it had like five miles and they were actually moving around with dollies under the rear tires. I think they finally accepted the reality that, you know, it's going to get miles on it, but even with 40 miles or even 140 miles, it's still basically brand new. Yeah, where is the line? I mean, does it lose value when it goes to 11? So it's now in double digits? It's hard to say, but you're right. You know, I've seen it on more than a few occasions, cars with just a couple miles where they're being moved around on dollies. It's nice to see this one exactly rolling across the stage. And we can see the sticker here. This is from ASC McLaren, and I'm looking at it, and it shows that the vehicle price at this point was $29,290. And now we have $200,000 bid. You know what, if I remember correctly, this is about twice what it brought in Florida, and we thought that was a big deal then. Now, under the tail of this car, we can kind of take a peek at the differential cover, and we'll see on the right-hand side a bit of a, uh, oh, a couple of aluminum fingers hanging down, and that's the rear end of the torque arm. That's something you only see on the GNX. Another thing, too, is this has two mufflers that are side-by-side, -side, whereas the Grand National has a cross-flow muffler. The thing is, that torque arm takes up space, the transverse muffler won't fit. That's why the GNX has two exhaust pipes and two mufflers. All right, it's the Skybox versus someone bidding at home over the internet. And the GNX option added a full $11,000 to what was an $18,000 car. So it was a chunk of change to bump up to that next level, not just a few dollars. 
number three seller of the day. Of course, ASC in the ASC McLaren stands for American Sunroof Company, which at this point in time was also doing the Dodge Dakota pickup truck conversions for Dodge, among a lot of other projects for the big three in Detroit. Oh, here we go. Wow. Somebody just tried to do a knockout punch, jumped at $20,000. This may well be a record for an 80s Buick at auction right here. So, Hammer time, $250,000. Closing in on the top two record-setting sales from Las Vegas. Before we get there, though, don't forget to go down to the Barrett-Jackson logo right down there and click and subscribe to the entire Top 10 series. All right, number two, first runner up in our Top 10 of record setters. It's Henry Ford II's 1966. It's a Mustang GT, a K-Code, it's a convertible, and it sold for $330,000. That nearly doubled the old record. Great, built specially for Henry Ford to drive at Le Mans during the 24-hour race weekend. Special paint, special tan leather. Prototype bucket seats from what would end up on the 67 Cougar, a Ford Design Center prototype for styling, HF2 logos prominently displayed, and then loaded with options, one of one. You know, the deuce, or Henry Ford II, was not fooling around. He had this based on a K car, 271 saw lifter, 289. Good stuff. So if you look inside and you look at these seats, and they don't look quite Mustang the way you would expect, that's because these are from a 1967 Cougar. It was a little bit of a, well, moving forward kind of style that they have. Well, being, of course, Henry Ford II, he had access to pre-production prototype parts, and I'm gonna bet you these are just that, pre-production parts that were under evaluation for future Cougars. He says, you know, I'll take those, put them in the car. Here we have them. And another little cool thing, when the car finally rolls to a stop, we're going to show you the center of the steering wheel. There you see it. It says HF2, Henry Ford II. Now, I know the fellow who owns the Le Mans winning Ford GT from 1966, and wouldn't this look great parked in his collection alongside it? Perhaps he is one of the multiple phone bidders on this car as we cross $200,000. The car's actually spent the bulk of its life in France. It's only come to the United States fairly recently. Four-speed manual transmission, a one-off dashboard with a Shelby-esque instrument pod, but again, that is not something that's out of a Shelby Mustang. That was made by Ford, special department for this car. Really, this is a truly unique and interesting piece of automotive history. Full records behind it. We know exactly where, why it was built, where it was built, what it was used for, where it's been for the bulk of its life. And now it's here at Barrett Jackson. This is a very interesting car. That 66 Le Mans winner was reportedly restored at a cost of about 100 times what this car is bid. I, I really think they ought to be a pair. They're the same color after all, raven black. Henry Ford II was the eldest grandson of Henry Ford. Henry, Henry II's father was Edsel Ford. Henry II was president of Ford between 1945 and 1960. Then the CEO through 1979. So, $300,000. $300, he sends Henry Ford II's 66 Ford Mustang convertible to its new home. And the number one, the top-selling record setter from Las Vegas and Barrett Jackson. Well, it turns out it was a Toyota, in this case a Supra, but not just any Toyota Supra. This was one of the cars used in the making of the Fast and Furious movies. In fact, it was in not just one, but two of the movies, and it shattered all the previous records when it sold for $550,000. 
Well, here we go. We have at least half a dozen phone bidders involved on this, the most anticipated car of this auction, the 1994 Toyota Supra Fast and Furious movie car. The Fast and the Furious, and Too Fast, Too Furious as well. It comes with extensive documentation. That documentation to come with the car includes a certificate of authenticity. The car was built by Eddie Paul. So this car was built for the 2001 movie and the 2003 movie by Eddie Paul at the Shark Shop in El Segundo, California, and then brought back for the sequel for its role as Slap Jack's Supra. Yeah, that color is Lamborghini Diablo candy orange paint. That style on the side. Troy Lee nuclear gladiator look to it. Man, this is big and bold and loud. Now they built several of these Supras for the film. This one is a very significant one. It was used in a lot of the stunts in the film, but under the hood, it's a pretty stock 2JZ. It's not the pretty car that they popped the hood to show off modifications. Also an automatic transmission, but a heavily used stunt car. This is a fourth generation Supra. These were built between 1993 and 2002. And while they didn't have a steel unibody, they were creeping in the use of lightweight metals, including an aluminum hood, which has been sliced a bit here for effect on the movie car. So they have added several phone operators to the phone banks here because of the interest in this car. Never seen so many people working the phone and the internet of Barrett Jackson on one car. And Craig Jackson was saying earlier, he has been getting just pummeled with people who want to know about this car. So as you mentioned, around the world, people are interested in buying this. Got to be 475. Now they got 475, you got to be 500. Way back when I was at Hot Rod Magazine, I did a how-to paint video with Eddie Paul, and he told me, he, he set a record in the Guinness Book of World Record. He actually rode a motorcycle from L.A. to Las Vegas doing a wheelie. Look it up. Eddie Paul actually did a wheelie from L.A. to Las Vegas on the rear tire only. Crazy. Now, the graphics down the side of this car, it's a man throwing a javelin or a robot, but uh, in the memes on the Internet, they call it the pull my finger man because he's sticking his finger out like you want to pull it. Half a million dollars of movie memorabilia that you can drive. Half a million dollars to a phone bidder. Thanks for joining us for our top 10 record setters from the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction in Las Vegas. You want to watch the next top 10? It's right there. It's really easy. I'm Rick DeBrule. Thanks for joining us.